In this tutorial, we will learn how to import a video file into Blender, and how to apply the video as a running texture for any object. Just like a still image texture, we can also use a video file as a texture and create a TV screen like this. So let us start with a blank new scene. We will apply a video texture to the front face of this default cube, but first, we'll make it flat, by reducing its thickness. So let us change this X scale factor to 0.2 and we can slightly move it up as well. Now, there is one very important step. You need to match the width of this object with the aspect ratio of the source video file. If you use a full HD video, the aspect ratio will be 1.78, but we will use an old clip of Tom and Jerry, which has an aspect ratio of just 1.37. So we need to change this Y scale factor to 1.37. Then turn on the rendered view mode, and we can also enable the HDRI lighting. Now go to the Materials tab. We can see that a default material is already added by Blender. But we need two different materials for this object. One for the backside and the frame of our display, and the second material will have the video texture for this front side. So we can turn this default material into a black material for the frame and the backside. Now let us add one more slot in this material list, and then create a new material for this slot. By default we get a principled BSDF, but here you can also use an emission shader. Then in this base color, we have to select image texture. Now click on open, and here we need to select our video file that we want to play on the object surface, and then open that file. But no change will be visible here immediately, because we have to first apply the material, the one that we just created, which is this second material. So we have to go into the edit mode. Now turn on the face selection mode. Then deselect everything, and select this front face. Now highlight the second material, and click on Assign. So we will see that a picture is displayed here from our video file. For a better display, we can increase the contrast, by reducing its specular value. But the size and the orientation of this picture is not matching with our video file, because the UV mapping is not correct for this object. So, let us split the screen into two such windows. And on this left side, we will open the UV editor. So we see that the video frame is displayed here as a texture, but the corresponding UV map is not matching in size and the orientation. From the UV menu, if we do an unwrap, we'll discover that the UV map is now matching in the height, but the width is still not matching. That is because we have changed the Y scale factor, as per our aspect ratio. We can resize the UV map, and try to fit it exactly on the image texture, but there is a better way to do this. Let us go back to the object mode. From the object menu, under apply, we can apply the scale factors. Now back to the edit mode, we will again go to the UV menu. If we do another UV unwrap, this time the UV map will fit perfectly on the image texture or the video file. So we can close this. And let us finally go back to the object mode. But if you now run this, you won't see any video playing here. We still need to make some more changes for the video. If we scroll up to the image texture, we can see few more fields here. For a moment, let us take a look at the shader settings for this material. We can see that the image texture node is here, and it has got some field like this. The same fields are visible here in the properties, and we need to make some changes there. First, we need to enter the frame length of our video in this frames field, which is 360 in our case. And let us also change the length of the animation to the same 360. Then we need to enable this option called Auto Refresh. This will enable the playback of the video. And if your animation length is greater than the length of your video file, you can also enable this cyclic option. The video will then play in a loop. Let us run the animation from the beginning. So we can see that the video is now playing as expected, and it looks beautiful. We have applied the video texture only on the front side of this object, the other sides have got a different material which is black. But you can also attach multiple video textures on multiple sides together, so all those textures can play simultaneously. However, there is no audio. You can easily add the audio through Video Sequence Editor, or you can also add the audio through a speaker object. Let us first stop the animation and go back to the first frame. Now go to the Add menu, and we have to add one, Speaker. Then go to the Speaker tab, and click on this Open button. Here we have to select an audio file extracted from the video, or we can directly select the source video file as well. It works both ways. 
Now if we run this, we will see that the sound is playing with the video texture. So this way, you can easily create a running texture from a video file in Blender. But do take care of the FPS parameter. If your audio is not in sync with the video texture, the culprit is most probably that FPS. For the best results, you should use a video that was created with the same FPS number, which you are going to use for your final render. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.